Welcome back friends. Uh, in this video we will be talking about uh, cDNA libraries. Now before understanding the cDNA libraries you must understand what are these DNA libraries. There are actually two different types of libraries there. One is the genomic library, another one is the cDNA library. But uh, these libraries are actually representation of genes inside the cell. Uh, so it can be representation of whole genes uh, including uh, the promoters and introns uh, in case of eukaryotic system and operons in case of bacteria system uh, and also the DNA regulatory element. So everything will be represented by the genomic library. So as uh, the books are present in libraries as we all know that there are different uh, segments of the library where different types of books are there somewhere there are uh, novels somewhere there are short stories and they sort everything uh, depending upon different things so in a library of book you can find several different types of books regarding different topics and different themes uh, in the similar way in this genomic libraries and cDNA libraries you can find uh, the whole gene concept in case of genomic and in case of cDNA library uh, obviously you can find all the mRNA transcript that are being present inside the cell at a particular time in a particular type of cell okay so it's a representation of its genetic makeup I, uh, we can tell it. So representation of the genetic makeup of the whole genes including promoters and introns and also uh, operons in case of bacteria will be called the genomic library and the representation of excuse me and the representation of mRNA transcript uh, only with the 5 prime to 3 prime untranslated region or UTRs so no introns are, will be there and also they are tissue specific they will be called the cDNA libraries. So cDNA libraries again it represents uh, the mRNA of eukaryotic system uh, at a particular time inside a particular type of a cell or tissue and also they are transcribing or they are presenting us the 5 prime to 3 prime untranslated regions or 5 to 3 prime UTRs. On the other hand genomic library representing all the genes that are present there. Okay, so that is the difference. These mRNAs are obviously having only, uh, this uh, cDNA libraries are only having uh, the, trans the regions which can be translated and uh, obviously in case of, uh, they, they definitely don't have any kind of introns. So they must not, not have introns, only exons which are the translatable regions. Okay, so cDNA library will tell us about the protein expression. So we can utilize cDNA libraries for the expression of proteins. We can transfect uh, other cells with this and uh, we, can, uh, we can trigger the cell to express several type of proteins inside them. Okay, in this particular video we will be focusing on cDNA libraries in major. Now you can see in genomic DNA, what this is the genomic DNA and the mRNAs are made. Now in genomic DNA library, this DNA content will be taken, DNA fragments will be taken and they are cloned into the vectors and we insert the vectors into our desired host cell and we start to grow the host cells in petri plates. So the petri plates eventually become our libraries. Now in this case of cDNA library, we uh, the genomic we allow the genomic uh, DNA to be transcribed into mRNA with their polyatails right after the mRNA modification. Then we take this mRNA with polyatails. We use reverse transcriptase enzyme to reverse transcribe the cDNA from this mRNA, and then we can utilize it. We can incorporate it into vectors, and then we can insert these vectors into the bacterial cells or the host cells. Then we can start. Uh, amplifying the host cell onto the petri plate. Now those petri plate eventually will become our cDNA library. So what are cDNA library? We have already discussed. It is a representation of the population of mRNAs. It only contains the exons of the protein structural genes. It does not contain any kind of introns. So we are having mRNA. We utilize reverse transcriptase to produce cDNA. Uh, so in this cDNA which is previously formed, the first uh, kind of cDNA that was formed from mRNA is having a hybrid structure. So it must have a representation of RNA uh, along with, uh, uh, so, so it must have DNA segment which is just made, this green color thing is a DNA. So you need to chew out this RNA segment. The RNA segment is degraded so that we get only the double standard DNA segment which is also called the DSC DNA. Then it will be incorporated into vectors. The vectors can be lambda fast vector, it can be cosmid, it can be bacteria artificial chromosome, it can be yeast artificial chromosome 
and so on and so that we can provide and made this recombinant DNA and they can be inserted into the host cell here if the host cell is E. coli so it can be inserted into the host cell like E. coli then we are having the recombinant DNA in E. coli so the clones that are present in a plate of E. coli we call it a library it will be called a cDNA library now construction of the cDNA library it's an overview and this giving you this is giving you the concept of what is cDNA library so as I have told you before it's a representation of all the mRNAs uh, all the genes that are present inside the mRNA uh, and including the poly A uh, tail so you get the modified mRNA here after the transcription all of this different segment of modified mRNA will be cloned after converting them into cDNA and then it will be inserted into different host cells and we can have this different colonies of different host cells containing different segment of mRNA into a same plate so we call it the say this plate a library and in this library these are small section of uh, different genes so if we get one section we drag out one section drag, drag out the cells from the one section lies them we get our desired gene so uh, if we make this kind of libraries and store them for a longer period of time when you require a particular gene of our interest we can uh, we can search for that particular clone we can drag that clone out of it for example say we require this gene this blue color gene of our interest so this gene is placed here so we need to take out this one so if we drag out cells from this one and extract the cell we get our desired gene in our hand in higher amounts so we can take it we can amplify it via PCR and then we, then we can use this product for our future purpose so it's a construction of this library will allow us to work with our desired genes for a longer period of time right so that is the importance of any kind of libraries. Now isolation of target gene can be achieved in four different ways. One is the chemical synthesis. It's very very much cost uh, costly. So once for the simple polypeptide chain can be done for a long complex polypeptide chain and unknown structure this cannot be possible. Second thing is the uh, obtaining from the genomic DNA library which is pretty good. So we are focusing on this part and also uh, but the genomic DNA library is pretty big because it is the representation of whole genomic content. So uh, screening a genomic library, screening means picking up the right gene of interest from the lot of varieties of gene is very much tedious. We are going to see the process of screening and during this uh, study we are going to see how much tedious it can be. So uh, we will be focusing on cDNA libraries because it is uh, smaller than genomic DNA libraries. It is only the representation of uh, intron, uh, exon parts and excluding introns or junk parts so we're getting only the desired parts so it's the best suited example or uh, technique for uh, getting our target gene for the protein expression studies so that's why we'll be focusing on the cdna libraries and polymerase chain reaction is another process but it can only rely once after we screen our gene of interest from cdna library or genomic library so this is not uh, happening on its own so it, it can be tagged with cdna library screening and genomic library screening now isolating a gene from a gene library so a gene library again a collection of different DNA sequence from an organism each of which has been cloned into a vector for ease of the purification right so it is already being purified so you just take out the cell and amplify the cell right so this is the simple part so we can analyze whatever type of gene we are, we are trying to analyze and also just taking out the cell from the clone from the library amplifying it via PCR and the job is done but the making of these genomic libraries are really really tedious because uh, snapping all those small segments of mRNAs for cDNA libraries are very very difficult okay so the gene libraries genomic uh, the genomic library and cDNA library we are talking about cDNA libraries now now the importance of the cDNA libraries is that first uh, some important concept about the cDNA library no cDNA library was made from prokaryotic mRNA because prokaryotic mRNA are very very unstable and the genomic libraries of prokaryotic uh, mRNA are easier to make and contain all the genomic sequences so for the prokaryotes we mainly rely upon the genomic DNA library instead of the cDNA library the whole genomic library is utilized but in case of eukaryotic system the whole gene content is so large so so much uh, versatility is there so we must uh, make it simplified so for simplifying it we rely uh, on the pro on the mrna libraries which are called cdna libraries okay so the cdnas have no introns so the genes can be expressed in e coli cells directly 
though they are uh, from the eukaryotic cells but except for the introns they can easily be transferred and expressed in E. coli cells. This is an advantage that we are getting and we are having less junk material so it's pretty easier to analyze right and they are also very useful in identifying new genes. So these are the importance of the cDNA libraries. They can be expressed in uh, host cells like E. coli and they are tissue specific. They, are, they can be identified, uh, they, they can help us to identify new genes and also uh, they are having much, much less junk sequences. Okay. So we can use them in protein uh, expression studies. Now here it is, the cDNA libraries. And in the cDNA library, how it is constructed, there are several uh, steps actually, six steps. And the future slides, we are going to understand each of these steps. First is the mRNA isolation and purification because the idea of interest is uh, the mRNA, not uh, the DNA. So we isolate the mRNA and also purify this mRNA via the poly A uh, column because the mRNA that we choose must have the poly A. So we utilize oligo DT column uh, to purify these mRNAs. The second thing is this uh, checking of the RNA integrity which is really really important otherwise we can can't take this RNA for making the cDNA libraries because we must have uh, strong RNAs, integrate RNAs for the process. Third thing is the fabricate, uh, fractionate uh, and enrich the mRNA which is also important. Concentration of RNA must be increased. Fourth thing is synthesis of the cDNA from this RNA via the reverse transcriptase enzyme. And fifth thing is, uh, so it is not written, it must be fifth thing. Treatment of the cDNA ends, uh, five prime and three prime ends of the cDNA must be treated. And finally, uh, we, we must ligate them. So the treatment of the ends are required for ligating them with the vectors. Because remember, vectors must have some overhang regions in both the terminals. And suppose this is our desired segment. The segment must have some again uh, some same kind of overhanging sequences at the terminal so that they can be incorporated here somewhere middle like that. Okay, so they can be incorporated here like that inside the vectors. Okay, so ligation will be done and we'll get it. Now, first step is the mRNA isolation. Most eukaryotic mRNAs are polyadenylated at their three prime ends. So, utilizing these concepts, we can isolate mRNAs pretty easily. So as these mRNAs are having poly A tails at its 3' prime end and if we get uh, oligo DT matrix which is a solid matrix having the uh, polythymidine here attached. So as we know this thymine, thymine can produce bond with adenine. So adenine and thymine make double, strand, uh, double hydrogen bonds with each other. So this poly A tail containing mRNA will be bound with it and rest of the impurities, DNAs and other things which does not have any kind of poly A tail at its 3' prime end will just elude through the system. And after separating all these things, after separating this mRNA from rest of the things like this tRNA and these proteins and all, all the components, we only left up with uh, this mRNA is bound with the oligo DT column. Then what we do? We wash away this uh, column with low salt buffer. As you utilize low salt buffer, they will break this hydrogen bonds between the oligo DT and the poly A tail so that this uh, desired mRNA will be eluted out and we can catch them in a container. So inside a container what we get after all we get our desired uh, mRNA. Okay, so oligo DT is utilized and this concept is very very important. Okay. So here you can see the concept of uh, this poly A tail and this poly A tail is very important during this separation as we have seen here. Okay. So that's it. S now there are three methods of isolating the mRNA. Traditionally, uh, the traditional method was done by passing a preparation of total via the oligo DT column, which we have just discussed. The second process is more rapid procedure to add oligo DT link to the magnetic beads directly to a cell lysate. So what we do, we provide a magnetic bead onto which oligo DTs are attached. Now we provide this magnetic bead directly into the solution of uh, the mixture of mRNA, DNA, proteins, and tRNA, RNA, all these things. Now these are having poly, uh, these are having oligo T, right? So oligo DT. So what they will do, they will grab uh, those those poly A tail containing segments. That means those poly A tail containing mRNAs onto them as as they are magnetic beads. So they'll drag them pretty clearly. Then we can just take out this bead and then wash these beads so that we get our mRNA. Third kind of technique is alternative route of isolating mRNA is lysing the cells and then preparing the mRNA ribosome complex on sucrose gradient. 
this is a complicated process we need to prepare the mrna ribosome complex and sucrose gradient in those cases where the poly a tail is not being formed but in most of the cases where uh, we allow the cell uh, we allow the dna to be transcribed into the mrna and the mrna contains all the poly a tail content after the maturation because we know during the uh, synthesis of mrna the polyadenylation as well as the 5 prime capping events are happening simultaneously so sooner get all those bonds or sooner get all those polyadenylation so we can utilize it for separating them out of the rest of the part but if uh, we utilize the mrna which is not modified uh, like which is not poly uh, polyadenylated and all these things in those case we prepare the sucrose gradient centrifugation and in using ribosome as as holding complex of mrna we can separate this ribosome mrna complex out of rest of the thing because ribosome can only sit on to the mrna it must not sit on to trna or protein e or any kind of rrna something like that right okay Second thing is the checking the mRNA integrity. Make sure that the mRNA is not degraded. This is very very important. Now translating the mRNA. First of all, use the cell free translation system, and we can translate the mRNA. And second thing is the analysis of mRNA by gel electrophoresis to understand this mRNA is is complete. Uh, they are not degraded. They are fine. They are pure. Okay, so we must translate that, and then. Uh, translation amount we get the product so by looking at the product we can tell this mrna is good mrna is good to go fine or else we can take the mrna just load them in agarose gel and look for the banding pattern if it is fine if it is uh, exact with a uh, correct kind of type of uh, banding pattern of mrna we can tell the mrna is good to go a mrna is good and the mrna integrity is fine but the integrity of mrna is important for the future reactions Now the third part is the cloning of the particular mRNA. It is useful, especially one is trying to clone a particular rather than make a complete cDNA library. Now what we can do, we can fraction it on the gel, or we can do for the enrichment method. Fraction it on the gel. How can it be possible? Performed on the basis of the size uh, mRNA of the interested size are recovered from the agarose gel. after running the agarose gel we can separate out our desired segment of mrna from that because once uh, when we need to produce this uh, cdna library there must be lot of different type of mrna or cdna that are going to be produced but we cannot produce all this mrna at once so we need to take out one part of the mrna at, at a time and then we will clone it then we add it to our uh, desired host cell for the colony development so that for example we take the mrna we run the mrna in agarose gel and in the agarose gel when you get the bands we suppose know that this is the part of the mrna we need to clone first need to make a library first so we take this sample out this species out and we take this species and then we carry out uh, the process of uh, hybridization with uh, the, C, the production of cdna from this mrna right so this identification is important because at the same time you cannot produce Uh, the library with all the different types of mrnas because the different types of genes are cloned different types of genes are transcribed so there are large varieties of mrnas present at a time inside the cell you cannot make a clone of all at the same time so you need to take each of them at a time and then you need to make a clone and do the further job now the fourth step is the synthesis of cdna so we take up our desired segment of mrna which i need to Uh, we, which i need to produce cdna at the very beginning so we take this strand so we provide uh, the dntps and also we provide uh, the reverse transcriptase enzyme so we provide the reverse transcriptase enzyme to fi finally so if this is the rna strand and we produce the dna strand so dna strand suppose it is a blue color thing is the dna strand is made once it makes this cdna it is a hybrid of dna and rna this green thing is the rna part this blue thing is the dna part we don't want hybrid because we don't uh, clone this hybrid we don't attach this hybrid with our vector so we need to degrade the rna segment so using rna's h enzyme using rna's h enzyme we can degrade this we can degrade this rna is h and after degrading this rna is h part what we get sorry we get both of the dna strands synthesized using reverse transcriptase now it is called the ds cdna this is also complementary dna but it is double stranded complementary dna previously it was single stranded complementary now it is double stranded complementary dna then we can take this double stranded complementary dna and we can attach it with the vector 
so here it is the process so this is the mrna of our interest having the oligo a now how we can produce uh, the the uh, another strand by applying the t so this poly a tail is not only helping us to separate or uh, elute the mrna out of the mixture of other things inside the cell lysate but also this poly a tail is helping us uh, in during the reverse transcriptase process because again this reverse transcriptase enzyme can work only if the c prime hydroxyl is free to him the c prime hydroxyl can be free only uh, if we add poly T at this A because A can bind with T so we provide T here from 5 prime to 3 prime so after adding several stretch of T at the 5 prime end here it will provide a 3 prime hydroxyl then uh, the reverse transcriptase along with the DNTPs can elongate this strand now it will make this red color strand which is the DNA strand but this black strand is the RNA so we need to degrade the RNA strand at the terminal part of this DNA strand we attach several C's Okay, so poly C is added. Why we add the poly C at the end? Because it was required. Because at the last part, we give the terminal transferase. Now, that enzyme terminal transferase will add a repeated C at the terminal part. Because once we reach uh, at the end of this mRNA using DNTPs, we stop the reaction. Then we drag rest of the NTPs out and we provide only CTPs. So, we make ensure that only CTPs are being added at the 3' terminal site. And we also put the enzyme terminal transferase. So along with the enzyme terminal transferase and DCTP, only repeated C's are added at the 3' end of this newly synthesized DNA strand. After that what we'll do, we need to chew up this RNA strand. The RNA strand is being chewed out by the RNA's age. Okay. And how to make this hydrolysis between the hydrogen bonds? We can make this hydrolysis by simply applying the alkali solution. Okay, alkali solution will hydrolyze it and also uh, the RNSH will degrade this mRNA. Then what we'll do, we put oligo DG. Now lot of G, DN, G, uh, so lot of DGTP are added. So this first beginning and also uh, the polymerase are provided. So the polymerase will start adding G, Gs at the very beginning of this new strand of DNA. After that we'll add rest of the DNTPs along with the clean off fragment of polymerase and also uh, we can provide reverse transcriptase so now the reverse transcriptase can add versatility of versatility of the dntps rest of the g because g's are added constitutely then we, they start adding rest of the ntps and they start adding and producing and elongating the chain and sooner we left up with making the duplex cdna or double stranded cdna so this is very clever procedure of first providing oligo DT here, then providing oligo DG here. Because at the very beginning, uh, due to the normal process of poly -S stretch, uh, we can uh, attach T and start the reaction. And after making this bond, we need to make sure that after it, we need to start the reaction. And this can be done by adding oligo DC here. Then oligo DG is applied, and they'll start adding it. Okay, so this is the procedure. Now once we made these things, once we make this duplex cDNA, after making this duplex cDNA, single strand specific nucleus is added and the single strand specific nucleus will cleave uh, some of the segment from it and we treat with eco R methylase. Now eco R methylase will add methyl group to the newly synthesized strand and then eco R1 digestion will be done. After using this eco R1 digestion and also we cut this segment from a particular segment to make an overhang. For example, say here we make this overhang region. So we cut it to produce this overhang, desired segment of our interest. And we cut uh, the vector DNA with the same type of restriction enzyme. So if we utilize eco R1 here, we definitely utilize eco R1 to cut our vector. So our vector is ready, our segment is ready to get this eco R1 digested product and attach it to our vector. So, so this is the black color thing is the uh, desired gene. It will be attached to the vector which is in blue color. Okay. Okay. So, so this red color thing is our say vector. So uh, red thing is a desired gene and blue thing is a vector. It is added. It is attached. And the ligation will be carried out by the T4 DNA ligase. So there are E. coli ligases there, also T4 DNA ligases there. 
we utilize T4 ligase, T4 DNA ligase will ligate and seal the nix. So we get a recombinant DNA molecule here. Okay, so we can take this recombinant DNA molecule and you can utilize it. We can incorporate it, inject it into the host cell. Suppose the host cell is E. coli, so we can take this, we can incorporate it into the E. coli cell and then we can start growing E. coli cell and make a colony of E. coli in the plate. So inside the petri plate, we get a clone of E. coli. So from here we can see that yes, our desired gene is inserted into the E. coli. But we need to make sure that our recombinant DNA is made and only those cells which are, uh, which are growing onto the plate are containing our recombinant plate. To make ensure that there are several techniques, antibiotic resistance selection and also there are several different type of marker selection is there. We will be talking about it in the new, next future video demonstrations. Now the last thing is treatment of the cDNA ends. Now the blunt and the ligation of the fragment is not efficient. So we need to have a use of special acid linkers to create the sticky ends. What do you mean by sticky end is that suppose this is a DNA segment. If we cut it, we can cut it by like this or we can cut it say like this. And if we cut it in the previous way, what it will generate? It will generate two ends. Both of the ends are blunt. So the adding of this blunt end is pretty tedious. On the other hand, if it is cut in the second way, right? If it cuts in the second way, what it will generate is something like that. And what it is producing, it is producing a overhang like that. And this overhang is called sticky because there are segments of nucleotide sequences coming out. So there is having a tendency to be attached with themselves by the hydrogen bonds. Right? So to produce this sticky ends is really important. So if we are having this kind of blunt ends, how can you convert this blunt ends with, into a sticky ends? So we take this blunt ends, suppose these two are the blunt ends, and we modify the blunt ends by attaching them with linkers. Say this small red segment is a linker, and we attach, we attach our linker there. Say, say, say this blue thing. So this blue color thing is a linker. So we attach our linkers, both the case. So the blue segments are linkers which are added. As we add the linkers, they start producing the sticky ends. So you can convert the blunt ends into the sticky ends. This is called the treatment of the cDNA ends. So we treat the cDNA ends with our linkers. Okay. Then we can utilize T4 DNA ligase to seal this nick, they will seal the nick and they will produce a recombinant DNA. Then you can insert this recombinant DNA to your host cells and then bingo, they will be done. Right? And the ligation using T4 DNA ligase, dephosphorylate the vector with alkaline phosphatase, then we can ligase it. Okay. So any vector with an eco R1 site would suitable for cutting the cDNA. And what we can do here, again, uh, both of the strands uh, at the end of terminal of it, it, it must have the 5 prime phosphate, so 3 phosphates. We need to dephosphorylate it and we dephosphorylate it with uh, alkaline phosphatase and then ligate it in the vector. Okay, the vector can be of a fast vector, it can be cosmic vector, it can be bacterial artificial chromosome or BAX, it can be yeast artificial chromosomes or YAKS, and we'll be talking about this uh, vectors later. Okay. So, in a sense, what we have discussed is that we take out our mRNA, extract the mRNA and this a crude extract of mRNA, tRNA, rRNA and the proteins. We separate mRNA using the oligo -DT column. After separating it, what we will do? We get this mRNA, we hybridize the oligo -DT with this A region and synthesizes the first strand. Then what we do? We add the oligo -DG at the terminal and utilizing that we add oligo -DC here at the very beginning of uh, the second strand synthesis. Then we attach rest of the nucleotide sequences to produce the double stranded uh, cDNA. Then what we do? This is a complete uh, perfect cDNA. We protect the cDNA by methylation so that restriction enzymes does not cleave it. So we utilize the methylase enzyme to methylate that. After that, what we will do, we add the linker DNA at the terminal site. So here it is the EcoR1 linker which will create uh, the GAATTC which is a typical uh, cleavage site for uh, GAATTC is a typical kind of cleavage size using the Eco R1 restriction enzyme. So we add the linkers at the both the terminal, then we cleave it with the enzyme. 
to generate the sticky overhangs at the both the terminal so it is the preparation of our ligate and then we have the vector we add this ligate to the vector along with the T4 DNA ligase which will attach this ligate to our desired vector then we get our desired recombinant DNA molecule we take the molecule insert the molecule inside the host cell in case in this case say E. coli we insert this into the E. coli then we put E. coli into the medium so that the E. coli can grow okay so E. coli is growing in, into the plate okay so we get this colonies from here so that's it that's the procedure of cDNA library and I hope this video is helping you Thank you.